Hey guys, Johan Ribs here, and I'd like to welcome you back to my class reviews series. Today, we're going to be talking about mid-game sharpshooters. To recap on what happened when we were talking about early game sharpshooters, I said in general that I thought that every Lance Corporal perk was pretty good, and they all lead into sort of different builds, so we can go for the Death from Above, Rapid Targeting, or Snapshot Sharpshooter. Uh, in general, snapshots best early, rapid targeting sort of a compromise, and death from above is best late, in my opinion. I decided to go for a rapid targeting build for this exact sharpshooter, just because I think it's sort of the most interesting one. You sort of take perks from all over the place, and it does cool things. Um, also, uh, sharpshooters sort of build on their perks. Like, all they really do is stand far away and shoot something, for the most part. And so their, their perks are very cumulative and they sort of build up over time. So when you're looking at my ratings for the perks alpha striking values, how good they are at killing enemies before the enemies get to act, or their breakdown values, how good they are at performing in situations where the enemies are getting to act and attacking XCOM, something to keep in mind is that this isn't really a soldier who cares that much about a single keystone perk which turns everything on all of a sudden. If anything, that perk might be the Lance Corporal perk death from above for some sharpshooters. Or the sharpshooter might not really have a perk that you can point to which is doing that. Um, instead, you're just like using squad sight plus progressively better and better aim and crit chance and damage that you're just picking up sort of all over the place to do your job better. So the ratings that I'm giving for alpha striking and breakdown, they're not going to be perfect for the soldier for sure, because there are three different builds that we could be picking these perks for. And the perks are sort of slow and incremental anyway. But I'm, I'm just going to try to give you a general sense of how good I think the perks are. And I'll explain my thinking as we go along to make sure that, you know, the stuff gets communicated from me to you, hopefully. OK, so mid game sharpshooters. I think that the mid games where sharpshooters start to really pick up, the big things are that we have timed missions more consistently, which are really good for sharpshooters. Also. Sorry, we have untimed missions, which are really good for sharpshooters. Also, in timed missions, though, I do want to make the point that XCOM's rate of killing stuff can increase on timed missions as you get into mid-game if you're building your soldiers to support that. If you have, say, Sapper on your Grenadiers, technicals with rockets to destroy cover, if you're picking up demolition on your gunners, if you're bringing assaults and shinobis and really focusing on defending them as they move forward aggressively, you're going to find that your the length of your missions for, say, a destroy relay or a hack workstation or stuff starts to compress and you start to have more time at the end where you can just mess around without having to worry too much about the timer. And because of that, there's more room to bring sharpshooters on timed missions in mid game. Um, you're also going to notice that you spend a lot more time killing enemies at mid to long range as you get into mid game and late game than you did in the early game because your soldiers have better aim. You've got better weapons to shoot with. You have more access to abilities which destroy cover at longer range. And because the enemies are more dangerous, so there's more uh, danger involved in getting really close to them. So all of these things sort of add together to make sharpshooters a little bit more desirable on timed missions, as well as their obvious role on untimed missions, where you can just take your unlimited time to set up perfectly and slowly whittle enemies down, uh, perhaps coupled with a defensive front line of hunkering technicals, suppressing gunners, even stealth shinobis where like, you know, the enemy doesn't even get to see you as you kill it. So sharpshooters are getting more appealing. Um, their staff sergeant perk does not really help that case much at all, unfortunately for them. Picking between long watch, independent tracking and low profile. And uh, none of these three perks is particularly exciting. Uh, let's talk about low profile first. I think that's low profile does the most obvious thing. Partial cover is usually 30 defense and low profile turns it into 45 defense. So I'm giving this one out of 10 for alpha striking because it doesn't alpha strike unless you're like 
throwing the defense at the enemy somehow, but I'm pretty sure the game doesn't support that. I'd have that would be a bug exploit, I believe. Uh, and I gave it a four out of ten for breakdowns. <laughs> so it is genuinely hard to put a sharpshooter in heavy cover. Often you want sharpshooters in elevation, and heavy cover in elevation is very rare. It's not very valuable to increase a sharpshooter's defense, though. Were it valuable to increase a sharpshooter's defense, I might have mentioned like defensive PCSs at some point. I might have mentioned like getting your armor up for your sharpshooters or how they equip defensive consumables or something. But you'll probably have noticed that at no point in the early game sharpshooters video at all was I talking about like how difficult it is to stop your sharpshooters from dying because it just isn't very difficult to stop your sharpshooters from dying. In the absolute worst case where everything's going terribly and your sharpshooters are in extreme danger, they can walk backwards and hunker and they won't die. And sharpshooters have low enough impact actions at this stage in the game that you're not even giving that much up for it. It's not like you're losing a rocket or a flamethrower from a technical. It's not like you're missing a, you know, guaranteed kill on a sectoid because sharpshooters don't quite do that yet anyway. So low profile just doesn't really do very much, and it's not a perk that I'm excited to take on sharpshooters at all. Uh, long watch allows Overwatch to trigger from squad sight range, and that might sound exciting to you, but there are a couple of things wrong with that. I gave it a 3 for alpha striking and a 3 for breakdown, because it's not worthless, but... There are a couple of things wrong with it. One is we have to end our turn by overwatching instead of using a stock. An elite stock gives us 25 aim and 25 crit on the next shot. So even if we know that an enemy pod is about to patrol into us, chances are quite good that we just want to steady the stock instead of firing an overwatch shot. Um, even if mathematically we deal less damage on average that way, we gain the ability to direct the shot at the target we actually want, which is very valuable because we don't have to worry about like, you know, massively overkilling one target that wasn't even important. Say that like a mech and a rocketeer patrol in, in a pot of five or something. We don't want our sharpshooter to be taking a shot and dealing five damage to the mech, especially if other soldiers have already dealt a bunch of damage to it and it's on like one hit point. And anyway, the mech would be really easy for somebody like a ranger to kill because it's not gonna take cover. It's just gonna stand there in front of everything. The Rocketeer is something that we really need to kill because otherwise it can shoot a rocket at us. And it's gonna like move into heavy cover far away from the rest of our soldiers. And with Long Watch, if we set our sharpshooter on Overwatch, we can't guarantee that our sharpshooter is gonna shoot the Rocketeer. In fact, it would be sort of unusual for that to happen. There's not, we haven't done anything to make that happen. We're just like rolling dice on which target it selects basically. So typically you'll just want to steady in that situation with a sharpshooter and be pretty happy with it. And then on our turn, we take a 100% chance to hit shot against the Rocketeer and most likely we kill it. We can even, we just took precision shot. So our sharpshooters are, are quite good at dealing with that Rocketeer. That's the specific sort of target that we're building the soldier to be good at killing. Um, as other soldiers get worse and worse at, you know, killing targets at long range fast enough to keep up with the damage output that the sharpshooter can give us. Um, the other problems with long watch are that it doesn't, doesn't understand not to pull pods who are patrolling around. So if we have like a stealth shinobi spotting stuff and we're like, oh, a pod's about to patrol in, let's hit overwatch on our sharpshooter. Another pod might walk just at the edge of the shinobi's range which we hadn't planned on engaging at all, and all of a sudden our sharpshooter is shooting it and we have another pod active. So it can be actively detrimental to have your sharpshooter on squad site overwatch because seeing something at squad site doesn't guarantee that it actually pulls. All the other overwatch in the game, if you see something and your overwatch goes off, you know that that was pulling already, but with squad site overwatch, you may sometimes activate extra enemies accidentally. Uh, was that all the stuff? With, oh yeah, and sharpshooters. Sorry, we're almost we're almost there. Sharpshooters cannot crit with Overwatch. 
a lot of the sharpshooters build is about um you know we have great aim already let's try to make it so we're critting more and you don't get any crits on overwatch so that is lost and if you pick up overwatch perks from the awc long watch doesn't actually even play nicely with those uh guardian for example gives you an extra 50 percent chance to take another overwatch shot if your first overwatch shot is successful seems like it would be amazing with long watch doesn't actually activate when you're on long watch overwatch so there are there are tons of reasons that this perk doesn't quite make it it's a perk i have taken in the past i gave it 3-3 three, three, I said yeah like it's okay there are situations where it does give you good damage um the reason it has 3 out of 10 rating on a breakdown for example is that if you're building a stationary sharpshooter someone with death from above um maybe somebody with rapid targeting and rapid targeting is on cooldown or you just don't see the value of moving and hollow targeting or something like that and you like are fighting enemies and can't see them with the sharpshooter this is one of the constant difficulties with sharpshooters when your like line of sight isn't great and you end up not having anything to shoot out for a turn hitting long watch in that situation can give you some damage as enemies move around in their own turn you'll have a shot go off and you may have to kill enemies in a breakdown before the next turn so steadying a stock isn't as appealing potentially as hitting the overwatch button still though in a breakdown usually enemies are close enough to your sharpshooter that just a regular overwatch will work independent tracking independent tracking might be my least favorite perk in the game because what it does is actually pretty good a hollow targeted enemy will remain so for one additional turn turns uh, do we pluralize that or not i don't know is it is it one additional turn or turns um yeah that's that's sort of cool so if you see a pod especially if you have a rapid targeting sharpshooter who can regularly hollow target twice a turn and with rapid targeting do it three times a turn if you want that means that you can just be spending your sharpshooters turns just constantly applying hollow to enemies and if they do patrol into you they're going to be hollow targeted for two turns which is probably enough time to fully kill everything um man alive is that boring to do like wow like so if you're on an untimed mission instead of just sitting around overwatching forever all of a sudden what this perk uh incentivizes you to do is every single turn as you see enemies with like your stealth shinobi you want to hollow target them twice with the sharpshooter and the animation is not quick for hollow targeting so you're going to be watching a guy shoot a laser pointer at things for a very long time that said, we're trying to evaluate the perks on how good they actually are, and independent tracking is okay. The fact that it's somewhat good uh, at Staff Sergeant, where the other perks are clearly not exciting at all, is one of the justifications for building a rapid targeting hollow targeter um, sharpshooter at all, because this perk makes your hollow targeting you know somewhat better and it means that you actually get something valuable out of the staff sergeant level up so we're taking independent tracking here for sure and what we're going to be doing with that is as we see pods patrolling around in the fog of war we're going to be trying to tag them with the hollow targeter so that as they pull we have them hollow targeted already and have an extra 15 aim 10 15 aim uh etc to kill them i took precision shot at sergeant despite the fact this is a hollow targeted build i think that's correct um that wasn't a mistake precision shot is a very very nice perk to pick up and will be very beneficial to the soldier you're allowed to take high definition hollow with this build though and it's it's like pretty good and we'll talk even more about that when we get to gunnery sergeant and are looking at kubi curry but yeah right now we don't have high definition hollow on our hollow targeting and that's worth pointing out but it's also worth pointing out that the hollow targeting is pr still pretty good still still quite nice okay cool so tech sergeant perks uh dead eye vital point targeting and aggression let's throw dead eye out straight away we take a shot with a small aim penalty for a significant damage boost we already can do that uh we took precision shot we can take kubikuri at the next rank we have the ability to take perks which are better than deadeye which are not against anything nearly as good as vital point targeting and aggression and we just don't need a third one of those we 
like barely need a second and certainly don't need a third. So that is not something that I'm going to be taking on sharpshooters particularly often. If you do have a situation where for some reason you ended up thinking this was the place that you wanted your perk, which makes a sharpshooter deal extra damage with one shot, sure, you can take Deadeye. If you're going to be building a Deadeye sharpshooter, you probably want to prioritize aim a little bit more and crit a little bit less. If you had like a mediocre aim soldier who ended up as a sharpshooter and you decided that you wanted to shoot with them instead of like haven advising with them, uh, you could go like death from above, damn good ground, lone wolf, low profile, independent, I don't just pretend staff sergeant doesn't exist for that soldier and then take that eye and it would be uh <laughs> i mean you'd get your aim up to a point where you were hitting and that eye would deal some damage i don't know yeah. there's a reason i've never done the build before and that's that like you can just get so much more leverage out of a sharpshooter who has high aim and you don't need that many of them in the campaign because they don't take wounds very often so you only need like two or three but yeah, I can imagine taking Deadeye, and it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. They gave it 4 out of 10 for Alpha Striking, 2 out of 10 for Breakdowns. Don't. Try not to take this perk. Try, try to have something better to do. Vital Point Targeting gives you plus 1 damage against hollow targeted enemies on all of your soldiers who are shooting at them. Um, for the Tier 1 and Tier 2 hollow targeter, if you make it to Tier 3 hollow targeter, it takes up to plus 2 damage, which is a very nice extra extra boost uh, vital point targeting applies in all sorts of ways that you don't really think about i think it's been turned off for a lot of the dots that it used to work with back in 1.0 it used to work with like abilities which didn't deal damage like yeah but i i'm pretty sure that's been turned off too but it's been it's been like a hazy enough experience that I don't know exactly which one. Like I don't know if the if the burn from flamethrower works with vital point targeting anymore and stuff like that. I'd have to look at code and do all that stuff, and it just doesn't matter that much. So um, vital point targeting is good because you hollow target something that you want to kill, and then it takes more damage, and that's pretty straightforward. You can think about it the same way that you think about a perk like center mass, except that vital point targeting is a little bit less valuable because it is like something you have to activate and even if you take rapid targeting that's on a cooldown so typically uh, vital point targeting has worse action economy than center mass does but it has better ability to be applied places you need it it stacks with center mass and it um it multiplies like every soldier who's shooting at the enemy rather than just one soldier so i think that this perk is um typically probably a little bit better than center mass if you have rapid targeting on your sharpshooter. Uh, I gave it six for alpha striking, three for breakdowns. It's not something that you'd ever pick without rapid targeting, but obviously that strength goes up if you did pick rapid targeting. And I'm going to be picking it over aggression on my sharpshooters with rapid targeting as a general rule. Aggression, uh, on the other hand, is just like, that's that's your go-to. That's where you make the bank on a sharpshooter who doesn't have rapid targeting. And it's, it's good enough that you may consider just taking it even if you did take rapid targeting on a sharpshooter. Plus 5% critical chance for each enemy you can see up to a maximum of 30. And that applies at squad sight range. So if you're sitting back at squad sight range and looking out on the map and you see six enemies just yeah all of a sudden you're getting plus 30 crit it's a lot of crit and crit is the thing that we're trying to generate with sharpshooters sharpshooters have the luxury of being able to hit 100 aim against basically anything that they want to shoot um, if for some reason they're not at 100 aim there are some ways to pull that up we can for example a rapid target um, it's hard though to get to 100 crit against enemies and that's something that's very valuable to do. And so aggression does exactly what we want for this soldier. The fact that it's better when we see lots of enemies is very nice. Um, I'd rather have aggression giving me up to 30 crit as we saw more and more enemies 
than giving 15 crit all the time. Um, because we want the perk to function at its best in a breakdown where things are scary. And that's why this has a 7 out of 10 breakdown rating, because the more enemies that we can see, the more crit chance we're getting. So I'm actually really torn on whether I'm going to pick vital point targeting or regression on this hollow target sharpshooter. I honestly think I might just take aggression. But we're starting to run out of reasons to not have taken death from above a lens corporal. Hmm. Yeah, I'll go vital point targeting, which means we're taking hunter's instincts probably. Uh, we're probably not taking Cupid Curry on this one. We'll take it on a different soldier or whatever. So this particular sharpshooter who we've taken through mid-game is starting to fall off in comparison to a death from above sharpshooter. What we've gained is the ability to be a little bit more flexible and help the team out a little bit more so far through the campaign. And the sharpshooter is going to continue to be a little bit better than a death from above sharpshooter in that supportive role. I think it's going to generally still remain better on timed missions a lot of the time. Um, a death from above sharpshooter at this point would be like death from above center mass precision shot. Low forget the staff sergeant exists and aggression and that's setting us up for you know 100 aim 100 crit shots every turn with the sharpshooter this sharpshooter is helping to force multiply the other soldiers in the team a little bit more able to move and do stuff a little bit better and you know just a little bit better rounded but less brutally strong in the way that death from above can be Cool. So, oh, and I guess I should talk about the snapshot sharpshooter as well. We go snapshot, center, mass. Actually, sort of like lone wolf on a snapshot sharpshooter. When you're building a snapshot sharpshooter, it's largely with an eye to like causing a huge impact with our high weapon damage early on in the game. Um, the sharpshooter is still going to scale nicely enough. Uh, at Master Sergeant, you're going to pick up cereal, and the soldier is going to be great. But Right now, it doesn't matter that much that we could cap out on aim for a snapshot sharpshooter because we're really trying to leverage the immediate early game situation. And often our snapshot sharpshooter isn't going to care about like the situation where somebody else destroys enemy's cover for it because we're going to like want to be flanking. And so we don't have time to use a stock or guarantee high ground for ourselves or things like that and so we we're, we're a little bit more challenged for finding aim so I, I'd like lone wolf on a snapshot sharpshooter but precision shot is definitely a very good option too you can take low profile on a snapshot sharpshooter and actually feel pretty good about it go ahead and do that and then I think that aggression is the obvious pick so we're just all the way down the right side for a snapshot sharpshooter in my opinion right now and yeah, a rapid targeting sharpshooter could have picked a couple of different perks as well. We could have gone high definition hollow instead of precision shot and have an even more supportive sharpshooter who really gave up a lot of power early because precision shot's a very nice perk to have when you pick it up, but it will scale slightly worse than high definition hollow would. And we could have taken aggression over vital point targeting if we wanted the soldier to be a little bit better at shooting as well. It's just a matter of how much are we warping the soldier toward a supportive soldier over a soldier who's dealing damage. We're aiming for it to do both. We don't want the soldier to like, we didn't want to take Phantom and sit the soldier in concealment and never shoot with it. That's, that's not going to be the goal. Okay. So I hope you guys enjoyed the review of mid-game sharpshooters. I will be back tomorrow with late-game sharpshooters. I want to plug the series that I'm playing with Filthy Robot again. We're playing a collaborative campaign where he's at the controls and asking me questions and we're talking about decisions in depth, uh, both in the tactical layer and in the strategic layer. So if you're looking for information about the strategic layer and hearing conversation like this with a player um, Filthy Robot's very good at strategy games, very good at asking questions, but doesn't know all of the mechanics in Long War 2 yet, so he's asking those sort of questions, like exactly how does this work, exactly what should I be thinking about when I'm making this decision. If you want to see that series, check out his YouTube, and I'll link it below the video. 
Uh, it's a great series and I highly recommend it. Very pleased with how it's going so far. And I'll see you guys tomorrow and we'll talk about some late game sharpshooters. Thanks so much for watching guys. I've been John Rips. See you next time.